Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. From the fabulous Sugar Shack Studios, it is the In Wheel Time car talk show. Coming up, we're going to have... I have to turn the page because I... I, It's a Bob Seger song. Turn the page. Is it really? Only you would know that. Coming up, we're going to get an update on the UAW strike. Remember, the new proposed contract still is yet to be ratified. We have the upcoming events calendar as well in this segment. Mr. Mars reviews the new Chevy Trailblazer and later auto teacher Jonathan Couch joins us. Plus, you'll hear the stories making automotive news headlines. All that and more just ahead in this hour of the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Oh, if you're listening in a podcast, in the 30-minute segment that's about to happen, mm-hmm. uh, you'll just have to listen to the next segment to yep. get the full out. Yep. So there's that. Don't be late. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, we always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us on this Saturday for this mashup of a car show. Yeah, it's going pretty smooth. You know, we've had a couple guests not show or guests not show up, and I, I kind of like the format. I do. <laughs> that, that kind of format yeah, where they I mean, don't show well, up? Mike's got, Mike and you have uh, done something different with the commercial breaks and all that good stuff. It seems to be working just dandy. Is it? Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you uh, that you approve mm-hmm. because we Mike, love the way your sound system worked first first right off the bat. Yeah, yeah that didn't work too good because well, I had this... I had this. It's not my Mike, I had this Mike Mars cable plugged into my computer, and it caused my computer not to put out any audio. Which so is that good was, to know that we were going to test that after the show, but we got that out of the way we early. Tested it we tested during did. the show. We got that out of the way without. So we did just tested it on you. There's that. All right, and thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your patience. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, no, thank no, you. no, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh no, thank you. Hello. Coffee, Hello. 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 <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs> All right. Joining us now, Sundaresh Haragu, uh, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at uh, the College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology at Oklahoma State University. And uh, we're going to talk Go to Cowboys. Him. We're going to talk to him about the UAW <laughs> strike and get an update on it. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for having me on your show. And I hope I, I didn't. I hope I didn't mash. Off. I hope I didn't mash up your name too too much. You did it quite well. Thank you. Ah, I guessed right. <laughs> Yay me! <laughs> so um, let's talk about the UAW strike. It seems to be going in the right direction. I think that uh, I hear that the only thing that's left now is for the auto workers themselves to verify, ratify. ratify the contract that has been proposed to all three of the U.S. automakers. Am I correct? Yeah, that is correct. In fact, I think one plant um, you know, ratified it uh, just in, yesterday, I believe. I think it was a Ford, one of the Ford plants. So with an overwhelming majority, by the way, they are in support of the new contract. So I think things are going in the right direction. And I would say for both, not just the work employees uh, of the auto plants, but also the companies themselves. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm glad this, this is uh, taken this kind of turn that everybody said, yes, we'll, we'll agree to the 25% uh, pay raise. But uh, there's more to just the 25% pay raise. It doesn't all happen at once, does it? No, it happens over a period of uh, four years. Uh, but there's all there are also other things that uh, that's in the package. You know, they've gotten rid of the tiered system. Um, there are benefits that are now going to be in place. I think one of the companies, uh, I think it was Stellantis, that uh, had to open an, a plant in Illinois as part of these negotiations. So I think it's, you know, from my vantage point, I look at it as a win-win-win for all. Well, that plant that you're referring to is the Belvedere plant. As a matter of fact, we talked about it uh, on this show a few weeks ago when I uh, went to visit my cousin up in Wisconsin, going from Chicago to Wisconsin. You pass right past that plant, mm-hmm. and uh, it's right there on the highway going up to Wisconsin, 90, I think it is. And, you know, passing these ginormous assembly plants 
it breaks my heart to see one that's sitting there not running not there's no one in the parking lot they got a guard sitting out there so you can't go in okay i got that but it's really not about the plant the the physical plant itself it's about all of the people that that plant employed thousands uh 1500 i think it was when they closed that weren't under contract but were people around the plant that did business with the the contractors and that goes with all of these plants that that shut down because you know the little bar down the street the hangout that these employees uh to the automakers go and hang out uh, after their shift is over with and uh how about the parts suppliers those guys too hurting as well because if the yeah. assemblers aren't putting the uh, cars together well what are they going to do they're going to have to shut down too yeah, absolutely. You know, if a plant is shut down, uh, you know, like you said, it just doesn't impact the employees there. But, you know, they say that for every automobile worker, there are six other jobs that are uh, dependent upon it. So it has a huge ripple effect. And the other thing, too, is, you know, if you go back to the um, uh, financial crisis of 2008, following which there was a ton of money that was put into the uh, automotive sector, and of course, with the new uh, Inflation Reduction Act, uh, again, there's more resources that are coming, that have already come. Uh, and it'd be a, a waste to see all of these plants that can be performing at peak capacity uh, just sit idle. Um, you know, it's been, what, seven weeks since um, the strike started? And, uh, you know, like we said earlier, Things are going in the right direction. Uh, one plant has ratified uh, the, the contract. And uh, uh, I, I think, you know, the short term, the automobile companies are probably going to take a bit of a hit. Uh, but, you know, if you look at their profits uh, since, you know, for the last 10 years, uh, the total profits have gone up by 92%, right? It's a total of $250 billion or something. And this year they're expected to make uh, north of, $30 billion, uh, despite the strike, by the way. I mean, that might put a little bit of a dent, uh, but that's good for, you know, American manufacturing. That's good for uh, certainly the employees, but just the whole economy around uh, a plant, you know, not just uh, the suppliers, that, that's an important component, but also, you know, like the mom and pop shops, the cafeterias, the Starbucks and all that, that surround these plants. Um, so, yeah, it's a be a waste to have them sit any more, uh, any longer, in an idle state. Well, I also heard that there is uh, some effect on some of these companies where they have pulled back on some of their EV expansions, uh, delayed them, postponed them, and in some cases actually canceled them. So there is going to be a much longer term effect, I think, on some of these companies. Don't you? Yeah, uh, in fact, I think uh, uh, GM is going to postpone, as of now, postpone the uh, transition to EV or building up, building new EV plants by about a year. Uh, that's probably reasonable. But if they do it any longer than that, um, you know, then they are kind of have to play catch up five years from now. I know currently the EV sales have gone down a bit. Uh, but, you know, we all know that that's the future, right? So if they don't do the steps that they need to do now uh, to uh, transition to that environment, whether it's battery manufacturing or just EV plants, uh, they might be left behind and uh, other competitors will take over, you know, their core business. How, how much impact do you think this uh, strike has had on Tier 2 and Tier 3 suppliers? Uh, as far as closing down and maybe never coming back? Yeah, if you look at, you know, companies like um, uh, the, the suppliers to uh, uh, G all, all three automakers, actually, um, you know, companies like um, Activa and uh, uh, others, uh, they are actually hurting. They're going to have reduced sales in the next, uh, certainly this quarter. Uh, longer term effects, you know, could be, uh, perhaps minimized if they take some uh, concrete actions to get back up. So the companies I was thinking was D Dana and Active, right, that they supply to the big three. Uh, but if you look at the tier three, tier four suppliers, 
there are many small companies that um, you know have cash flow issues that might not be able to make uh, payroll, you know, from one month to the other. Uh, they are definitely uh, going to hurt in the short term. Uh, hopefully, not the long term. But this is where the big three perhaps has to step in and uh, help stabilize their supplier base. Uh, you know, they are all sitting on uh, in a high level of profit. But if they work with their suppliers, especially the tier three, tier four, and uh, support them with you know some uh, good financing terms and uh, you know assured sales and things like that you know with the new plants opening i think that that's going to be helpful but they can do a lot of things to make sure that their supplier base is not hurt and then how many how many hits can these suppliers take through the years you know getting hit back in 2008 with the collapse getting hit with covid and now getting hit with this strike you know i think there's going to be you know some of them are just going to shut their doors and never come back yeah yeah i mean if you right go back to 2008 but uh, you know, the pandemic for sure. But in between, you know, they've had slowdowns, uh, small strikes here and there, you know, the chip shortage um, that put them way behind, plus the unpredictable demand, right? Who knew that the demand for cars right after the, or SUVs after the pandemic was going to skyrocket. Right. Um, so the econ economic uncertainty is another factor, you know, labor shortage, right? We are sitting at what, 3.8, somewhere around, 3.8% unemployment rate, and not to mention the transition to EVs, right? All of this is just, um, you know, things that are impacting the stable operation of, of, a, of a business. So the ones that are nimble, the ones that are, you know, um, are able to adapt are the ones that are going to uh, do very well. But I think it's in the interest of the big three to support all of their uh, suppliers in the, in the best way that they can. Well, you know, here's another thing, too, that I think people lose track of the fact that <clears throat> the guys that guys and gals that are, have been on the picket line, they were paid by the union $500 a week. So do the math. How much is that uh, over a year's period of time? They've lost money going into the Christmas holiday season. Oh, yeah. And, you know, despite the fact that, yeah, they got this four-year agreement that raises their pay by 25 over four years over four years so i don't know as if they'll ever be able to make up the money that they've lost for the seven weeks that they've spent on the picket line yeah um well let's start with the employees first right in the um 10-year period their wages have really gone down by around 10 percent the estimates are somewhere between 10 and 15 percent depending upon the type of skill that they bring in and now, over a four-year period, they've got a 25% wage increase. So that barely puts them back to where, where they were, you know, given inflation and, uh, you know, and they go to, when the employees go to buy a car, they also see, see a huge increase in price, right? Uh, not to mention all of the other things that they buy. Um, you know, those, those prices have gone up. Um, and for the companies themselves, I think, you know, again, when you're looking at the big three, they're what thirty billion dollar profit that they are expected to take, so they will take a hit uh, uh, in the short run. Uh, but you know, they uh, all of the uh, the uh, companies and the uh, UAW they get their act together, they work together. Uh, I think they can push uh, the regular car market envelope even more, but also make a quick transition to EVs. You know, that's coming. Um, I don't know how much longer companies can afford to say, I'm going to push it by a year. I'm going to push it uh, by two years or three years, you know, use one excuse or the other. Yeah, well, that's, um, uh, it hurts well, everybody. This, well, this especially time. the fact that these companies have already committed and invested billions of dollars in making EVs. And let's not even talk about the battery plants that are being built all over the United States. And those plants alone are a billion dollars a piece. I mean, we're talking about a lot, a lot of money. Well, here. one of the things I read about the contract that they're going to ratify, or some of them will, is that if a manufacturing plant closes in the United States, the contract can be null and void and they can go back on strike. So this is actually preventing the manufacturers from building 
new facilities like EV or hydrogen or whatever the case in the U.S. Because down the road, some of them will have to close at right. some point. Either, either that or build them offshore. Right. And that's, that's where they're going And I think building it. them offshore is going to be a high probability. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. I and mean, think about the automobile industry, right? They, uh, their share of the U.S. economy is something like one and a half trillion dollars. Um, somewhere between three and five percent. Um, you know, not they produce uh, how many cars? I think almost uh, a little more than nine million cars in the U.S. So they have to make these investments and in plans on a, a continuous basis. Um, you know, they really need to have their uh, eye on the you know long term picture, right? Um, even if they close down some of these plants, and if it's not in the contract to you know offer employment to the people who lost their jobs by the way some contracts they are saying if you convert from a uh, uh, gasoline uh, engine based uh, car to an ev car some of the contracts are saying that the job needs to be guaranteed for for the workers but whether they have it in or not um, they you know with the labor shortage right they need to uh, make sure that they've got they're taking care of their employees uh, well, in the short term and the long long term, and offer them opportunities so they can begin to contribute because they already have the expertise, right, in doing the assembly plants and all that. So why not? You know, if you have to train new people, bring them in, that's going to cost them a whole lot more. Absolutely. So I think you know, companies will probably need to look at longer term rather than just the quarterly results, in my opinion. Well, and your opinion is uh, is is truly appreciated oh, on the, on this program, and uh, you bring quite a bit of knowledge to the whole thing. And we want to stay in touch with you if we can, and and uh, get some more of your input uh, once everybody gets back to work here in the next few weeks, and and see how things are going. Can we do that? I would love to do that. Uh, thank you, Don, Mike, and everybody else in this crew. I appreciate uh, you having me on this morning. And we appreciate you too, Sunaresh yeah, Haragu. We uh, very much. Yeah, and you know, I really didn't give him due justice in the introduction to, of his uh, his actual background. Yeah, the credentials. Uh, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs in the College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology at Oklahoma State, where he is a Regents Professor and holds the John Henricks Chair. He served at the University of Louisville as director of the Logistics and Distribution Institute uh, at, at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, State University of New York, Pittsburgh, and held visiting appointments at State University of New York, Buffalo, Technical University of Eidenhoven University uh, in the Netherlands, and IBM's Thomas J. Watson Research Center, author of the fifth edition of Facilities Design and an expert on supply chain logistics. I mean, I could go on and yeah. on. Well, he's forgotten more than we'll ever know. <laughs> and, you, and you know what? I went to public school. <laughs> yeah. I graduated Oklahoma State in 78. Go Pokes. Go Pokes. <laughs> <laughs> Sunaresh, thank you so much. It's, it's a pleasure and an honor to talk to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you again. You bet. Yeah. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address here is info at inwheeltime.com. And be sure to follow us on facebook as well time now for the events calendar we have events and uh some of them we're going to participate in and some good ones you know we'll, we we're advertising now for autorama thanksgiving weekend always the big event here in houston you want to go see a lot of custom cars mm -hmm, mm -hmm. autorama is a place to go it's also a place a lot of car clubs will show up i think Northside mustang club is going to have a big outing they always do they always have a big space set aside uh, there and then um, the fourth annual Memorial Benefit uh, Taps and Turbo Car Shows is uh, going to happen today at 12:30 at No Label Brewing in Katy. Uh, the 17th annual Heroes and Hot Rods Veterans Day weekend <laughs> is next weekend in downtown Bastrop, hosted by the Bastrop Area Cruisers. They have uh, 300 registered vehicles already. They have 400 registration openings, so they're still available for another 100 cars. If you're interested, go to BastropAreaCruisers.com and register your vehicle. It's a great show put on, and it's been going on for quite a while. And downtown Bastrop's kind of a cool little cool little place to visit as well. Yep, it definitely is. Thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with Mr. Mars' review of the Chevy Trailblazer oh, after wait. this. Tailpipes and Tacos is back. 
It's been a while, but the popular Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In returns to the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy, and it's an extra special one. Bring your hot rod classic or modern classic to compete for one of the famous chili pepper trophies, and get a free breakfast taco. Just make a donation of any size to God's Garage and Loopies will match it. You'll be helping single mothers who need a set of wheels. It's been almost a year in the making, so you won't want to miss Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, November 11th, 8 to 11 a.m. Cruise in, donate what you want to God's Garage, and grab a free Loopy Tortilla Breakfast Taco. Tailpipes and Tacos only happens at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy at 703 West Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of the Katy Freeway. It's car show season, and what better way to kick it off than a free taco and camaraderie at Tailpipes and Tacos. Saturday, November 11th, 8 to 11 a.m. The In Real Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. Proceeds benefit God's Garage. Rogers Dab Chevrolet and GM Performance have the absolute best price that you will find on GM Parts Plus, transmissions and engines. Over $25 million in parts and powertrain inventory and customer service that will be not matched by anyone in the country. Rogers Dab Chevrolet and GM Performance, whether you are a drag racer, an oval track racer, a hot rodder, it matters not. Rogers Dab Chevrolet and GM Performance will have the best price in the country, the best customer service, and the best delivery times that you will find on your GM parts. It can be on your dock, at your front door, in a matter of days. It's Rogers Dab Chevrolet GM Performance and customer service to boot. Contact our Texas team, Gina Shile knows at 713-907-0906 or Rodney Rodriguez at 512-300-4445. You will not find better service or better inventory in the country. Rogers Dabs and GM Performance. Rodney Rodriguez doing wow. that commercial. Man, Thank don't you so yell much. at me, Rodney. I get I mean, it. Yeah, he got it. All right, uh, time now for this hour's car review here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. And Mr. Mars has a review of the Kia Kona. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind. The Chevy Trailblazer. So make sure you leave a space there that I can edit that out, please. So we're talking about the 2024 Chevrolet Trailblazer all-wheel drive RS. Now, this is actually a second gen of this vehicle that was introduced in 2021. It does come in four trim levels, an LS, an LT, an active that I think you've had, Don. And then the RS. Now you can get all-wheel drive in any of these vehicles. So we had the RS with the all-wheel drive. This is a subcompact SUV. Supposed to seat five. Better be friends in the back seats, all I can tell you. Well, it's right. a small. It's yeah. very small. It's compact. It is. It is. And, but it ain't your mom's truck-based trailblazer that used, used to, to be. be. Right. Well, the, the, the people that watch this show, they're young. They're enthusiastic. and They, they don't, don't even, remember the old. Hell and, no. And that's true. That's, that's, that's what true. a grandpa had. And, and I will hey, tell hey. you that my teenage grandchildren, they really liked this vehicle, and they liked all the buttons and everything. I've got so one, too. The RS has got a unique grill on it. It's got some unique RS badging with black trim on it. Uh, it's a blacked-out package. So we had the black roof with the summit white body with a black paint panels across the bottom and the blacked out wheels and stuff is really a sharp looking vehicle was, when you I got agree. it out in the sun agree it's really nice up front you're going to find led lighting it's also all around it you're going to find the heated side mirrors got some roof rails got a power sunroof a uh, power lift gate that's hands-free we were rolling on 19 inch gloss black aluminum wheels available on the rs trim level and, and i really have to say i think some of the things that we're going to get into particularly in the interior i was really surprised that a subcompact suv had this much content on it i really was so you get inside you're going to find that the seating on the rs trim level is the evotex seating material now that's a synthetic leather replacement it's supposed to wear better but feel like leather whatever it was nice front seats are heated and ventilated passenger seat on this vehicle falls flat all the way down so that you can literally put an eight foot object in there if you want to and the second row second seat folds 60 40 and it folds down and with this has the for this year the 24 they had the new 11 inch touchscreen where you're going to find your nav and all your convenience controls in the middle of the dash and there's an eight inch driver screen that's got all your content now this is the vehicle i'm driving now is the same way i've noticed the 24s they're starting to take some of the stuff out of the driver screen like trips and mileage and things like that and they're moving it over in the software into the center stack screen. So where you might normally, like if you were looking for, I reset the road trip. That's like, what happened. Yeah, yeah. You can't find it over here in the driver's <laughs> exactly. screen. It's over in the center stack under some different, you got to dig for it, but it's it's in there. 
and it's nice. Got to know it's how big. to search through the menus to find it. Yes, yes, yes. You got to kind of look. We also had the premium Bose audio with seven speakers, and it was really cool. And uh, we had the wireless charging. The second row has A and C USB type charging ports. Ooh. You can't go out on the internet, but you can charge your devices with either type uh, in the second row. Now, up under the hood, because it's the RS, it has the 1.3 liter turbo. And this is a three cylinder. And because it's the all wheel drive and it's the RS, the standard engine in the Trailblazer is the 1.2 liter three cylinder. Uh, the one we had is 155 horsepower, 175 pound feet of torque, backed by a nine speed automatic. Now, if you get the 1.2 liter with 137 horsepower, you're going to get a CVT with it. You, that's just the way it is. Now, the EPA says you should be looking for 26 miles to the gallon city out on the highway 29 combined 27. Now, I drove this vehicle a little much. I drove it 445.3 miles the week I had it. And I got 25.9 miles to gallon in it, which I was pretty, that's pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Pretty happy with that, concerning most of that was in but the But did city. it have enough horsepower? Yeah, they look, get up and go. It was adequate, the way I put it. It's a little slow on the downshift because of the nine speed. We've talked about that before with the yep. small motors. If you put a nine speed, you know, sometimes Hunting you can. for gears. Yes, it's got to go a little too far. Now, if you pull it down in about halfway down and step off into it, like it's more like a regular six speed, it'll get up and go. So maybe. A six-speed, performance-wise, may have been a better choice. I don't know about gas mileage. I don't know if it would have Did it have killed. paddle shifters? No. Nope. Okay. Did have three drive modes, modes, normal, sport, and then you get into the all-wheel drive and all that stuff, and I couldn't tell much difference between any of them in this vehicle, and I didn't really see any need to. I like driving it just the way I had it. Now, the base model price for this vehicle, again, remember, this subcompact SUV, $23,100. Dang. Now, that's the base, the stripper. Now, the trim price on the RS was $28,700. However, we had some options. Uh, we had some package that uh, pushed the MSRP up to $34,670. No. Well, it, it did, but I really, looking around, I didn't really think that was too bad for the amount of content you get because I didn't, there's still some more stuff in there that we just didn't have time to go into. So we're kind of hitting the highlights. But if you go look at a Volkswagen Taos, 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 Taos. Yeah, that one. $24,155. A Mazda CX-30, $26,360. These are the base trims. And then the Subaru Crosstrek at $26,290. These are the four all-wheel drive vehicles that I could find in that same size to kind of compare them to. But I was really surprised. It's been a long time since I've said, uh, I really like this Chevrolet. Uh, and the grandkids and I, did, too. Yeah, and Kylie likes the one. She liked the uh, tracks at the uh, auto show. Yeah, and this is that. kind of price. It's situated uh, size-wise between the tracks and the Equinox. It kind of fits in between. Yeah, the Equinox areas. is a little bit bigger, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, But anyway, I was I was fairly impressed. And so if you're looking for a vehicle in that size, I would definitely go check this out when you're checking out the rest of it. The In-Wheel gotcha. Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 on iHeartRadio. Just search in wheel time car talk we also video stream on facebook youtube twitch and in wheel time.com and 30 minute podcasts are at your fingertips on over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets out there the in wheel time car talk show will continue right after this quick break hey houston america's greatest hot rod tradition is back thanksgiving weekend the o'reilly auto parts auto rama at the george hart brown convention center four action-packed days of hot rods customs classics trucks and performance cars the ultimate lowrider showcase sponsored by shorty's hydraulics see lone star throwdowns texas size truck spread and don't miss the traditional rod and custom section friday saturday and sunday see wild high-flying freestyle motocross stunt shows shop the swap meet and Women's World all weekend on the Celebrity Stage presented by Nick's Auto Repair and Classic Car Restoration Friday, meet AEW Tag Team Superstars The Lucha Bros Saturday, it's Noel G Hector from The Fast and Furious Sunday, it's Lou Ferrigno The Original Incredible Hulk The O'Reilly Auto Parts auto -rama. November 23rd through 26th at the George R. Brown Convention Center Discount tickets at O'Reilly Auto Parts Part of the Summer Racing Equipment Show Car Series See Autorama.com for more info Houston's finest cars are invited to another Gulf Coast Auto Shield car social Saturday, December 2nd, and you're invited too. Show off your personal pride and joy, or just stop in to see the likes of Lucid, Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari, and more. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your one-stop shop for paint detailing, coatings, window tint, clear bras, and wheel repair. 
The Car Social is your opportunity to get a tour of this state-of-the-art facility located at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. It all takes place Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon. This is the perfect opportunity to connect with other car enthusiasts. From BMWs to Bentleys, Corvettes to McLarens, the Car Social is a different kind of show. Talk to the owners. See Gulf Coast Auto Shield's facility. You'll be amazed. Put it on your calendar now. The Gulf Coast Auto Shield Car Social, Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. We'll see you then. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts.